Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Kashif Booth Podcast. If you're new here, each week I sit down with a guest and we discuss their career so far, the highs, the lows and what's next for them. Today's guest is Jamila Winget. She's an actress, writer, intimacy coordinator, dancer, all around dope creative who I've known for what is crazy, seven years this year. Really? It's actually crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's just wow. been so long. It's such a journey because we've done so much together, worked together closely as well with such mm. amazing projects. Projects. So, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's honestly such an honor to be here. I'm, oh, I'm so you. stoked. No, I'm happy to have you guys on. Like, I've just been interviewing everyone who I worked with as within the actor, producer, writer relationship, mm. especially this season, because this is the third season and it's all about actors. So, mm. really want to delve into acting and, you wow. know, the behind the scenes and in front of the <laughs> camera. It's just like such a different kind of level you know and mm. i was just saying like we've known each other for seven years you auditioned for nate and jamie mm -hmm. and i just had josh on and he'll probably be like the episode before this anyway yeah. and what was funny about that whole situation was when we did nate and jamie we had to like do an aunt viv situation mm -hmm. with the fresh prince of bel-air so i needed a new person to play michelle on the show and you audition for michelle and i always remember it was down to you and lauren who eventually got the role and i was mm. like okay i really liked jamila mm. but i was like okay let me hold her as an ex-girlfriend and that just ended up lasting way more anyway yeah. so what was that like for you do you remember that whole process so long ago i do i actually remember it um quite vividly well mm. because I remember it was like summertime yeah. and I had to get my neighbor to come and film me do it. This, this is before I really knew how to do a self tape mm -hmm. like properly. And I remember her distinctively. Well, I remember us in my, in my mom's bedroom because my mom had the best wall okay. <laughs> so okay. for the background. Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> and I literally remember my neighbor coming around who, who I was a dear friend. I've, gr I've grown up with her and she was literally like on the other side of my mom's like huge bed, like hot, trying to hold the camera like really still. <laughs> yeah, and I think yeah, we so even filmed it in like um, portrait. <laughs> like, <laughs> I had no idea, uh -huh. right? And I remember just being in like, my little dungarees and then just yes, doing this. I whole do remember thing. that. Yes. yes. <laughs> when you were in that, in that. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And I remember having to like act it out and pretending to like shake someone's yes, hand. Yes. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's really crazy to think back to them because I remember the casting was on Star Now as well. Mm -hmm. And. Yes. Yeah, it's I I actually remember that that doing that tape very very wow, vividly. Wow, and it's so funny because it led to you getting the role on Nate and Jamie, and then being in season two, and then obviously Newlyweds. And so mm. my listeners have probably heard me talk about Newlyweds a lot because of such the process Good. it was, and I feel like. I broke it down in a way because it was realistic to television of mm. how long you work through that process of developing a show to then actually get it made mm. so jamila is well was one of the writers of the show but we didn't get to yeah, film those episodes no, <laughs> but is the shame. main star of newlyweds and so they've heard me interview jamal as well so what was it like for you when i pitched that to you because i remember i it was in my head for mm. a very long time and i remember going i'm in and ring about it. i was like do i really want to add that onto my plate but it's such my brain kept on going and mm. i was like uh, let me just say it so what was do you remember that process of what you thought it was like when I just told you about <laughs> this idea yeah no I do I remember I remember the day we we filmed the the wedding scene and it was again summer day in Brixton very and hot. um very hot yes. and I remember I think I was at drama school at that point and um, came down, we're getting ready, you know, just, just doing hair and makeup. And I remember you just so casually being like, yeah, there's a whole other thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be like, this, this, I'm thinking about a spinoff. But you, the way you were just relaying it was just so casual. Like, mm -hmm. you'd obviously been thinking about it for a yes, while. It's definitely yes, been in your mind. Yes. And you were just like, yeah, no, Vanessa and, and Jacob, they're actually going to get back together. And, da, da, da. and it was like, whoa. I was like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> uh -huh. So, yeah, if you want to call that your pitch, then it was it was received <laughs> yeah, well because I just because it was in my head and the funny thing is is that it had been on my head from when you came to shoot in Brixton again in that little Afro futurism shop we were filming um, the uh, third yeah, episode of Nate and Jamie yeah, yeah. I had told Yaz who was the exact producer of the show the story mm. of how I would just kind of mapped it out my brain just wouldn't stop working and I just mm. felt like when you're creative especially on the TV show there's so many 
ways you want to like further develop the character because you only get to know a character through the lens of one character through their being the main character arc and yeah. so that's why it just kept on going and going mm. so i'm happy it stopped where it did because i don't know where it would have went just like continuously going <laughs> on and on so yeah so that oh, was yeah. cool i mean it's not over until it's over you never know exactly exactly so how did you get started because i know you're from an acting family your mom mm. is a I mean, she has been shortlisted for Oscars for her hair and makeup work. Your dad yes. was best known for being on the bill. Your yes. aunt is everywhere. I know. Obviously. So, like, what was that like for you? Like, how did you get started as an actress? It's a really good question because, you know, growing up in, in that kind of environment, I didn't know anything else. And it also took me a while to come to the decision of wanting to act because when I went to university... Um, I went to Manchester Metropolitan and I did English literature and film and, you know, originally I was just going to do English, but then I didn't, I had to go through clearings so I ended up in Manchester, which was just such a divine blessing because of all the, all the people that I met and just the time that I had. And then after that, well, I think it was the second year summer, I interned at a production company and I was like, oh yeah, I want to be a producer. It's like, yeah, great. Love it. want to do that. Da, 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 da. And the the company actually said that they'd be able to give me a job, like an assistant producing job when I finished uni. And I was like, okay, cool. So that was like good to know. And then third year came round and it came to the end. And I remember Mary Calderwood who um, hired me in the end, but she called me and she said, I'm really sorry, but we don't have the assisting production um, job anymore. And I was like, oh no. What am I going to do? And um, I ended up interning at a different uh, music video company. And then she was like, we actually have a job for you and it's going to be doing sales. And I didn't really know what it was, but I knew it was just in production. And I was like, okay, great. I just want to just get in there. And it was so funny because the more that I saw of production, the more I was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and I think especially like seeing the types of people and the stress and mm -hmm. just how the also the women were affected. They, they seemed like, you know, they were quite like heavy drinkers and they were ooh. always quite like stressed out. Mm -hmm. And I was a bit like, I'm not sure <laughs> I want to be like that, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I kind of stayed in that world for a couple mm -hmm. of years. And then I got to about 22 and I was just really miserable because, you know, doing sales, you're out every night of the week trying to make new business at the events yeah. and again, drinking. And it, it, it just all got to a point where my mental health was not great. And I was like, I really need to check into what it is that I want to do because this isn't serving me. And I know this isn't feeding me. And I'm getting that Sunday night dread of like almost yes. like wanting to cry, <laughs> thinking about work, going to work the next yes, day. And I was yes, like, yes, I don't yes. think life's meant to be like this. Mm -hmm. Um, so again, I, um, I actually secretly started taking weekly lessons and I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell my parents. I'm still living at home at the time. Um, I think I told my best friend, but literally on a Thursday night, I would just kind of like slip off for a couple of hours. And it was an introductory course at the Giles Foreman school in, um, Soho. And I could only do half the course because I'd planned to go to America for three months also just to kind of like just have some space and everything and like figure everything out. Um, and um, yeah, I did half the course and I was like, wow, I really enjoy this. Like, mm -hmm. I really like this. It's giving me something. I feel like I'm releasing something. I feel like I'm processing something. I feel like I'm, this was very personal to me. And then I remember shortly before I left, I actually broke the news to my auntie and I broke the news to my dad and they were both really like, oh my God, they were like, really? Mm -hmm. They're like, really, we really thought you were going to, you know, do this production thing. We mm -hmm. thought you were just going to stay in this game. And I was like, I know, but I think living with the regret of not actually going after something that I truly want will be so much worse than if I do it and say fail, whatever mm -hmm. failure, you know, means or looks like to you. So... I um, went to America for three months, had to just blow off some steam and I ended up in Los Angeles for a couple of months. And the last two weeks I was there, I did this kind of like intensive course and really enjoyed it. And this is something that I, this story always gives me shivers because I remember mm -hmm. the last, my last night I went out for dinner with a mum's friend, a friend of my mum's and um, I got an Uber pool home and we, I get picked up and then we, we stop me pick up this other girl and she's talking to the driver and I can hear she's British. So I was like, oh, like, hey, like, are you, are you from England? She's like, yeah, yeah, I'm from London. And then we just got chatting. She's been here for, for a few years and whatever. 
And I was like, so how did you do it? She was like, oh, I just went to the school called Identity and just like put on my credits and then just came over here. And I was like, oh, like what's Identity? And she's like, oh, it's a school, like you should audition, you should go, da, 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 da. And I was like, cool. And then we swapped numbers and we stayed in touch. I went to Identity, that, that, that then led me to Identity. I started, yeah, my, my first term was the freshers term. And somehow at the end of the term, I got paired up with this, um, with, with this guy to do the scene for kind of the end of year showcase. And it turned out that he knew the girl from the Uber pool. Oh, okay. What? Yeah. That is full circle. Full, full soul circle. circle. And I was mm-hmm. like, okay, cool. I'm on the path. Like, mm-hmm. this is it now. And these little yeah, synchronicities yeah, yeah. mean so much. And I'm just exactly. like, okay, cool. So, yeah, that's kind of how I how I got into it. I really had to take my time and think about it. Um, and, yeah, that's kind of where, mm-hmm. it's, where it's got me to. That's good to hear because sometimes when you are from that kind of background, you know, you grow up in it. It's kind of like when you look at this whole nepotism baby yeah. conversation and how, you know, when <clears throat> an artist from like has a child and they're growing up within this environment, like, and they want to pursue it, there's kind of this oh, are you supposed to do this because this is what you're from? You need to figure out if it's for you, you know. Exactly. And I don't think there's anything wrong with if that child wants to step into that and actually pursue it it's not like they're going to be tom hanks's son chet hanks out here speaking pat tom and sounding a mess like at least like at least these guys there's there's many who are just great at what they're doing and it's great to see you pursue that because that's your dream you're not doing it for anybody else's or because you grew up in that it's like you took time out to kind of figure out what you want to do for yourself that's exactly Mm -hmm. it and i even remember being an identity and i wanted to keep it so quiet of kind of like you know the family that i that i came from because and, and and now I look back on it and I'm like, wow, like, I don't know if that's just because I wasn't ready to like step into that space because I think I just felt a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of kind of like, I just felt like by revealing that there would be a lot of like pressure on me of like, mm-hmm. well, you, you've you got to be really good. You've got to be really great. And I was like, no, like I want to come into the space and be seen as an equal. I don't want to be seen that I've got any sort of leverage. Like I'm, I'm in here just as everyone else in this room. Mm-hmm. And it's really funny, like, only really recently because I've started developing and writing my own stuff and you know my uh, my family have got so many contacts where I actually only just feel comfortable to start kind of like reaching out to people that I I know and I kind of had this moment where I was like oh I was like baby Jamila knew what she was doing she wanted to like you know build her own thing start doing her own stuff and then start you know maybe thinking about who she can reach out to because before it just felt too it felt too early and mm-hmm. I wasn't quite a bit still mm-hmm. a bit like Bambi I was yeah, bit like oh yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I want to come fully mm-hmm. fully rounded and know what I want to say so I've kind of had another full circle moment in the re- really really recently with that kind of theme so it's been interesting I really like that because as again like when you're trying to figure out your place in this industry you're allowed to stumble and fall but you don't want to stumble and fall at a certain level Mm. and I think it's great to take those baby steps you Mm. know I keep saying to everybody I'm at this point where I've reached like the top of the ceiling and so now I'm like trying to figure out where I want to go next Mm. and where I want to take myself my career and stuff and that it comes with age do you know what I mean people always want it to be successful in their 20s I'm so happy that I grinded and learned so much in my 20s now we're in our 30s and it's like okay I know what I'm the direction of where I'm going is more purposeful and it's yes. more focused so it's like okay this is what I want to do and that sounds like the space you're in as well yes. so I'm looking forward to seeing where you go now because you're doing so much like like you said you're also an intimacy coordinator mm. and I didn't even realize that was the thing until a few years ago and you've done great work with what well, didn't you work on riches which is on Amazon Prime yes. and ITV yes, yes so yes. how did you get into that and what was that like for you to just do that yeah, so I always say to people, it honestly was the right place at the right time. Mm-hmm. And and ever I hear someone else said that in the past, I'm like, oh yeah, right. I'm like, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, come <laughs> it's just on, so cringy, the, the typical just, like, oh, so cringy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But genuinely, it was just the right place at the right time. Like basically, when I was at um, drama school, I it was I was studying. I graduated 2018, so I, I did the MA program. So it was starting 2017, finishing 2018, which was the year of the Me Too movement. And it was basically the year the whole intimacy initiative was born. And our final term, we our movement teacher was Ito O'Brien. So every week, I think once or even twice a week, we would have her. 
and there was the whole intimacy thing was very very new and she was like right I've got this kind of like um new ethos of how to be working in the industry and she's like I'm going to give you guys a module on how to govern yourselves in an intimate situation on an acting set as an actor so we had this um day of basically doing it and um cut a couple of years later I think it was 2020 I was on a indie and there wasn't really much budget. It was actually with Josh. Okay. He, he brought me on onto it. I played this amazing character, this like ancient snake goddess. It was I had the best time. And um, there was some sort of sexual scenes, not to do with me, but other cast members. And I said, look, I've actually got some guidelines here, literally from the top dog, which I can share. So proceeded to share those. And then the producers then were like, okay, do you want to come and do this erotic thriller? <laughs> um, like seven to 10, I think it was literally a week or if not 10 days of back-to-back intimacy. Oh, wow. And it was a baptism of fire. There was all sorts of stuff. There was threesome, shower scenes, same sex scenes. It was honestly like oh. so much. <laughs> but from there, I've just been rolling. Okay. <laughs> But it's so important to have this because when you think about shows like HBO, listen, there's always mm. some, it's like they put it in the contract, you must have a sex scene or a nude scene. So it's like, it's so yeah. important. And it's a form of directing as well. Yes. And you as an actress, like, how do you feel like that um, just gives you more insight? Because mm. you would know the intimacy of what it's like to be with somebody you don't probably don't even like sometimes or you're not mm. even vibe, you know or you don't even have that chemistry as actors to portray this like so what are some of the tips you give the actors or how do you direct them in that moment it's so sort of like personal to the production to the actors needs to uh, there's just so many factors there isn't kind of like one set way um but one thing i will say is that it's taught me so much just about being on set Mm -hmm. like yeah I've grown up on sets but equally it's taught me so much about directing and cinematography and all the how all the different departments come together and politics and it's also strengthened my acting like for instance I had this um, intimacy job come to me last week And it was very, very, very intense. And and I was like, I'm not sure I'm the best person for this. And I had to kind of say no to it. And it was really scary because as a creative, and especially as kind of like as an actor, you know, you just want to take all the work you can. But it kind of gave me this lesson of just like, not everything actually is for you. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, what, what, what is for you won't miss you. True. But you also have the option mm-hmm. to be like, yes or no. And I'm like, I actually want to take this lesson forward into my acting instead of this kind of like grab, grab, grab mentality. Just kind of like sit, wait, if it comes to you, if you feel like you're suited for it, great. If not, next time. So, yeah, but, you know, it's all about sort of like consent and and just boundaries and just checking in. And it's a, I find it a very instinctual job. And you know me, I'm such mm-hmm. an instinctive person. Yes. Yes. Um, and I'm very sort of like emotionally led and I'm, I'm very good at kind of tuning into people's emotions and seeing the temperatures of them in the room. And I just really like that side of it. And it's uh, it's just a really nice job. It kind of feels like you're kind of giving back in a way because yeah. acting can be, I feel like a bit selfish sometimes where you want it to play. Like, it's me. I want to do this and I want to be on this and I want to win this award. No, 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 no. <laughs> and it's like, it's actually quite nice yeah. with the industry just to be like, I'm going to look after you yes. and I know yes. what it's like for you, but I just mm-hmm. want to give back to you, make sure you feel safe, mm-hmm. make sure you feel in the best position you are to perform. Mm-hmm. That makes so, sense. Yeah. So, because you are doing that on top of your writing, because I know I read the work, the piece that you are working on now at the moment yes. as well. And I always think it's important for actors to write and tell the stories that they yes. want to tell us, share as well. And for you as a mixed race actress as well, especially mm. being in the UK, the representation is always going to be a conversation as we're always going to yes. have. But I'm seeing a lot of representation of mixed race in terms of, okay, understanding your identity. And it's a lot in... Um, documentary and factual formats but it's still to me lacking in scripted because you have especially because you're mixed race half white half black so within that representation you're only really seeing it as okay they're portraying a black person so what do you want to see more of as your writer as an actress as a woman you know what are you trying to change for yourself as well Mm. what you want to bring to the UK 
Yeah, to the, it's a really great question. Like this is um, immediately makes me think of riches because I feel like it's the first time we've seen an affluent black family on television. Mm. And I think for the first time, you know, being being mixed race and middle class is the first time that I've seen a world that's somewhat I can actually relate to parts of it because I don't relate to the top boys. I have so much respect for them and I think mm-hmm. they're amazing platforms and they are, you know, incredible stories. But that's not where I see myself. And when I get asked to audition for those types of roles, I'm just like, but this is going to be embarrassing for me and for the cast director. <laughs> because with the MLE kind of London Street accent, that's, as you can hear, that's just not how, mm-hmm. I, how I speak. And I don't mm-hmm. really want to... Um, simulate that so I think with riches I really like to think it's the beginning of of a whole new genre of making TV and film and I think I just really want to yeah just see more of that and I think with my project you know it's about a pop star and um, I'm it is told the lens through the lens of 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 a mixed race woman so immediately that there's always going to be that kind of identity thing and I think, yeah, I just like the complexities of of the black and mixed race experience. Mm -hmm. It's not all, you know, the top boys and and the blue stories. It's kind of like there's there's, there's, Mm -hmm. there's, there's just so much more in the UK, which I don't think people really know if you're not in the UK. And I think that I like to think Riches is going to be the beginning of of that whole new kind of like bracket. Mm. I agree. Because I, as we said, we've known each other for so long. So we've had these type of conversations and I know what you want Mm. to bring to the forefront, especially when we was doing Newlyweds, we really kind of unpacked Vanessa's character Mm. because you were definitely connected to that character for such a long time. Yeah. And that's what you wanted. That's what I wanted to do as well. Show the representation of you know, different aspects of black people. And the more I'm even um, working with different people now, it's not even just the London experience. There's so many different experiences from yes. black people from up north. And, yes. you know, like this, uh, because it's just, we could, you can't put us in a box. Yes. And so it'll be just good to see what you do with your film as well. So, because I saw you post the other day, you've got exciting updates coming. So Yay. is there anything you could share about I can, that? I can, a little bit. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. So... Yeah, I've been, de- you know, as you know, I've been developing it for about two years, yeah. and literally in the last few weeks, I've had a director accept the offer of wanting to Amazing. direct it. So that's really exciting, and yeah, I'm just sort of in the, still in the development process, but I feel like we'll be moving very soon to pre-production. Good. So it's mm-hmm. yeah, and I'm just kind of enjoying mm-hmm. the journey, mm-hmm. and that's what I'll say for yeah. now. It's good because. <laughs> What I love about that script, because I read an early draft of it, and you know, it's mm. you have to think of shows like I Hate Susie and yes. all those kind of vibes. And it's like, when have we seen, okay, a black woman or woman of color just in general play that kind of role in the UK? Yes. You know, you had like, um, what's that one with Fleabag, you know, all these shows with white women where they're great shows, but let's just do this in the UK now. Insecure was a great breakthrough, do you know what yes. I mean? For those kind of showing just... A diverse group of women and men because it wasn't just awkward men it was all aw- i mean women sorry it was awkward men it was everybody yes. from all different walks and so i'm excited i'm really looking forward to that mm. and just see what you bring because i've read your writing when you worked wrote, wrote for newlyweds as well mm. oh, who knows we may get that done one day on another mm. scale mm. and so it'll be just good to just see your growth and just take it forever so what else is going on with you what you can share we've got coming up as well well, funnily enough, I do, I've got a short film coming up that I'm and I'm the main part in. And it's actually going to be the first time I'm doing intimacy scene, like as an actor. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's, those are the rehearsals I'm going to after this. Okay. And I'm, I'm like, I was reading the script and I was a bit like, ooh, I'm actually a bit nervous. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, like, I haven't been on this side. Like, it was mm. quite like, ooh, intense. But yeah, that's coming up. That's going to be great. That's also a very interesting story because that's about a woman who becomes pregnant but doesn't want the child like just mm-hmm. because that's how she sees her life she, she wants to be a childless woman and it kind of turns a bit psychological thrillery towards the end and it's 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 just a really cool story and I'm really looking forward to getting involved in that um and then aside from that just really just developing mm-hmm. my my short nice because I really want to film mm-hmm. it this year 
Great. So mm-hmm. yeah, kind of all energy into that at the moment. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. That sounds good. I mean, I'm really excited to see that film. That sounds great. And I can see you playing that type of role because I've said that before, you're a very eclectic actress. So you can like fit into any type of box. I'm looking forward to seeing mm-hmm. how that comes out. So where can people find you to see all the previous work you've done and what's mm-hmm. and stay tuned with like what you've got coming up? Well, I think probably my best is best place to find everything is my Instagram because I like to post things on there. So that's at Jamila Winget. Um, and I kind of think that's it. Like, it's funny, like last night I was actually going through and like clearing, I was like archiving a lot of stuff. <laughs> cause I was like, I just don't know how relevant this is yeah. anymore. <laughs> um, but it was also nice to kind of like go back and just actually see all the stuff that I've done. Yeah. Cause I think the pandemic came and just really yeah. made things so sticky. Yeah, really so did. I was like, wow, I've done that. And I've done that. <laughs> I've done this. I've done that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think mm-hmm. my, I think my Instagram is the best place to find okay. me, even though I find these days I'm kind of opting more and being more offline. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. at Jamila Winger, you're going to find me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, thanks for coming on the show, Jamila. It's great having you Thank on you for as well. Me, so, yeah, it's good. So, as usual, guys, you can follow me all on my usual socials. There's a bunch of them. So, stay tuned for the episodes coming soon. <laughs>